Hi, and welcome back to Dirtbag Baseball Talk. Kirk McNabb, as always, and uh, our uh, usual two that have been with me the last uh, three weeks, uh, Emery Lafferty and Robin Gargano from L4 Living Life and uh, Loving Life and L4 Map for Mental Agility for players, parents, coaches, scouts, agents, executives, organizations, the whole gauntlet. And as you know, as you've been following along with us, we have been working our way through uh, the series. And, and we started with the players, athletes. Last week, we were on to parents and stuff like that. And, and we're going to circle back and do more parents because we know we, we kept it pretty general on how they can create positive or negative noise and impact themselves as well as athletes, as well as coaches. If you're a parent of a, a youth uh athlete right now and stuff like that so we're going to dig a little deeper as we move forward as well but for today's episode we are going to be talking coaches and and two of the biggest key areas that Robin and Anne-Marie like to dive into when they're working with coaches that they find the biggest impact in creating the right noise but also if you don't have these skill sets how it could impact negatively as well so we do have before we get started with it mr cliff terracuso a former coach at the uh you know collegiate level very busy uh man right now in the uh scouting world and stuff like that i'm not going to say too much more about that but he is on with him he's going to be talking about his his development as as a coach evolution as well, going from probably high school right through into the collegiate level and stuff like that. And, and to more or less validate what Anne-Marie and Robin are going to be saying. So sit back, enjoy the show. We're ready to go and we're excited about it. Anne-Marie, Robin, coaches, coaches. Let's start off before the two big key areas that you have. What is it that you really feel is a driving factor and importance for them to just, if they are coach watching right now, before we get too deep, a lot like a parent, I guess, the major impact and how they can impact and create noise, positive or negative, for players. What do you think is, is the biggest thing you would like to get across to them? Yeah, well, thanks for having us back. Excited about this topic this week. If you choose to be an effective, impactful, inspirational, motivational coach, there's two areas we feel that are critical, super important things to master communication. And that is communication of self and communication to others and leadership. And there's so many components we're going to break down with that. But if you aren't working on those two things constantly with tools and advancements, you're going to stay stagnant. You're going to stay still. You aren't going to be the person that you can be to inspire and get your messaging across. So communication and leadership are the two areas we're going to focus on today. Imperative to have. Okay. Let's, uh, let's dig into that. Where, wh when you talk about communication and you set a key point there, self, I, I think that's it. Let's, let's start about the self-awareness before we get into team concepts, individual one-on-one -on -one player concepts, maybe a parent coach relationship. Why do you find, what is the reasoning behind your, your absolutes of starting within, starting with self? If you aren't digesting yourself, if you're not looking at all the things that are coming into your world all the time and seeing how they affect you, you are not seeing how you're affecting other people. So we start with the self and that's what we do at L4 map. We assess, and this is a great place to start. You want to always assess yourself in order to be able to know where your blind spots are, where your discoveries are, where you really, really excel. And we start for the communication. We start with a really simple, but effective assessment. Let me just take a sidebar for a second. The thing with assessments is you'll hear teams, organizations, all places, even in the corporate world, they'll talk about, oh, we do all these assessments and it's so great and wonderful. But what ends up happening is people will assess and then they'll do nothing with it. It's not being used in the proper way as a baseline to map out where your starting point is to see how you're progressing. So an assessment is a really great tool for your own advancement. You don't know where to start assess yourself. 
that'll show you where you're lacking and where you can excel. So we use an operating system assessment for our coaches. And this is really how L4 map kind of took shape. This was one of the first programmings that we put out. We get your personality by the simple assessment. Are you a controller, an analyzer, a supporter, or a promoter? Then you get a combination of the two. So you're either a controlling supporter, an analyzing promoter, a supporting analyzer, whatever the combination is. Once you discover what you are and how you communicate with yourself, meaning how do I take in information? How do I like to be spoken to? Then when you go out into the world and you are speaking and you will train on this, you'll be able to see, oh, I know that coach Cliffy T, you know, is a controlling promoter. I know that Kirk McNabb is a supporting analyzer, right? Just by training yourself, you're going to pick up on how to talk to other people so that your message lands with them. So a great coach will not only assess themselves, but they will assess their players. So now I know that, okay, Kirk, you're one of my players. Okay. I want to deliver a message, but I, let's just say I am a supporting promoter. So a supporting promoter is someone that's really animated, really all in for you. I'm going to promote you, but I'm also going to stand behind you. And I'm going to be that person that's going to build you up. You let's just say, are a controlling analyzer. My hype and my pump up and let's go and let's talk like this is not going to land with you. You're going to be like, what is up with this kooky coach? You, as a controlling analyzer, need directness, facts. Kirk, I really want you to go out and try it this way. You don't like it, let's adjust it. That's it, we're done. You need support with that. You need to think about it a little bit more. You need some stats to go along with why I'm asking you to do this. I'll give those to you. But right now you go out and just try this and then let's come back and have a conversation. Now, Anne-Marie, if you are a analyzing supporter, I'm going to come to you and say, Anne-Marie, the reason I'd like you to try it this way is because of A, B, and C. If you love this new way, this tool, this mechanic, we're going to really work on this. We're going to really pump you up. We're going to really make this work for you. So what I did there was I delivered facts in the beginning An analyzer needs facts. And then I delivered the support after now that's not how I would talk, but that's how Anne Marie will take my message. I'm not going to talk so direct all the time, but I'm going to talk that way to you, Kirk, because that's how you will get the same message that I'm going to deliver to Anne Marie. That is how a coach develops communication with themselves in order to flex into communication with their players. And that is what helps to build a facet of leadership. Yeah, there's no question about that. Cliff, uh, you know, when you're when you're evolving, I think you can validate and put a stamp on that too, the same as myself, but you don't see that much. We're going to talk about the baseball world or whatever, because that's our comfort zone, obviously. That's our knowledge base. But boy, moving up from, from Legion ball, local ball, high school ball, the college or whatever, and that, they throw you to the wolves. They throw you to the wolves, right? And and a lot of it is like Robin said, it's that 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 bravado. It's that, you know, you gotta lead and you gotta just show them. And it's it's from 50, 75 years ago. It's been forever our perception of it, right? Just and the reality is that's right. I mean, you get a pitcher out there that doesn't live in that world, boy, you can wreck a career pretty quick. That's just one example, right? Yeah, man. I mean. Thank you for being out. Let me be on here. It's been a while since I've done any of this type of, uh, you know, interviews or whatever, probably about three years. I mean, yeah, Kirk, I, 13 years as a college coach, um, Nova Southeastern University, got a chance to, you know, coach uh, four major leaguers there. I was before that I was at Palm Beach State Community College, had the chance to coach three major leaguers there before that Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, got lucky enough to coach three major leaguers there. Before that, St. Catherine College of Kentucky, and before that, Palm Beach Atlantic University. So I've studied a lot of the best coaches that are out there and see how they talk to their players. And, and I wanted to really, 
I want to let it be known that I didn't know this stuff before. If I would have had this training years ago, I don't know where I would be in the, in the coaching world. Um, but I mean, it would, it would be exciting and sexy to see because this is a way of communicating. And now I go back in my mind's eye with some of the players that I couldn't connect with that were very talented players. And I feel bad because I probably did them a disservice of not knowing this type of information about connecting with that player. You know, um, I've worked for some really great coaches. I mean, Wynn Fletcher, Greg Brown, Mike Mominy, Luther Bramblett, got the opportunity to work with some great assistant coaches in my past. You know, Ryan Romero, Lance Wheeler, you know, big baseball think tank guy. You know, but like over the past few years, I've got a chance to spend a lot of time with some amazing coaches, whether they're, you know, guys that, you know, operate in the lab, you know, the John Updikes of the world, to the Eugene Bleakers, to the Joey Kunas. I mean, these guys are all like really good coaches and friends that I've had the opportunity to spend time with them and they're great at communicating and connecting. And a lot of these guys are doing it just organically. And what Robin and Anne Marie bring to the table is actually teaching a coach, hey man, there's a science behind this. And there's a strategy behind it. And then therefore you're able to connect with more players. You know, and that's ultimately the same thing. I can't, I, I just I just think back, man, like being in the cages and I just couldn't get with this one player. I don't know why. I feel bad for Nathan Sensing. If you're out there, buddy, I apologize. I needed to handle you in a different way. I didn't understand, you know, Robin, that he was a controlling analyzer. And now I understand it. I would do it completely different. And that's just one player of many. So I think like for the coaches out there that will be paying attention, you know, and wanting to learn more about this, it's about the actual connecting with each and one of your players because, you know, it, time is so valuable. Andy Lopez, one of the greatest, you know, coaches of all time out there at Pepperdine and whatnot, um, you know, at University of Arizona, read his book. I mean, he'd like to spend at least seven to 10 minutes with every player on his team. And it was every day during practice, which I thought was outstanding. But I started thinking as an assistant coach, I don't, how do I do that with my players? You know, so he was doing that well before our time, before this even was a thing. And Robin and Marie have mastered this and the ability to, you know, teach and help and, 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 and just the ability to assist coaches in becoming better communicators as leaders. Yeah. Yeah, and it's huge. Uh, like you said, I mean, if you don't understand leaders or uh, learning learning styles and everything like that, that's one of the first things you do. Go to, go look up that that seven ways of learning and stuff like that, just to get your head into it. And then, like Robin was talking about, crossing it over and putting it into a component that makes sense for you. It is so important. I thank you also, Cliff, for the fact that you you did something that we don't usually do, especially on the male side of the ledger. And, and you owned it. You apologized. And we don't like that, right? We, we ah, that's him. That's, that's his fault. He, he didn't learn. He didn't work hard enough. Instead of saying, no, you, you looked internally and you said, that's on me. I know now that probably the way I was speaking with him wasn't a fit. And I didn't take the time to learn about him. So exactly right. Communication, so, so, so important constantly. Even if you agree to disagree, I think at the end of the day, it's still a positive, right? Because you're going to get educated, which ultimately is empowering you moving forward. Mm -hmm. Anne-Marie, I know you want to get on to the leadership part of it. And for me, just a big part of it is what we're doing right here, even in that it's the constant evolution of yourself. Again, looking inside yourself, Robin, I guess at the end of the day, but constantly evolving as a coach. But leadership what does it mean to you what does it mean to l4 yeah and i would say leadership is taking that look at yourself doing kind of doing that 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 check yourself and it can be just as simple as you know how am i feeling today how am i interacting with others what am i bringing with me to those practices and to those games and you're a coach but you're also a son, a husband, an uncle, you're a person. <laughs> and we all come with stuff. We all come with, you know, family history, baggage, whatever that is. And so when you start taking a look at yourself, 
and seeing what kind of a leader you are, what kind of a person you are, what do you stand for and where are you coming from? That's where we start putting the pieces together. Say, okay, here, here are your, your, your strengths. And we also see on the other side, maybe some things that are holding you back. And we can do that also through the assessments, but there's also through just, just a simple check-in. You know, how's it going this week? Where are you at? And giving them a couple minutes just to do this check-in. You know, things, things were really great, but oh, this happened. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. And we kind of break it down into small pieces. And again, we can analyze it and name it all we want, but then what I do is I take that extra step and that energy component, and then I start looking, but where is that coming from? And then there may have been a coach, you know, maybe when they were eight and 10 years old, and that was really gruff or that was rough, but left some kind of an imprint on them. And sometimes those are good imprints, but also sometimes they're detrimental imprints which then causes the player to hold back. You were too much. You you hit it too hard or you know. Then then we find a fault in something. So now we're living from our faults. So then what I do is I can go back and energetically take a look at those pieces, but then I can also go back and delete them. There's several ways that we kind of have this delete button. Um so if you had a loud demanding coach as a youth Sometimes you think that's the way to be. So then you evolve into a loud, demanding coach yourself. And so those, those are the patterns um, that we look at and we say, okay, how can we take your strengths and make them better and expand that? And then how do we take these not so great parts, but then turn them opportunities and strengths for you? Yeah, 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 you hit the nail on the head with, uh, I think that's the most common thing is obviously coming out as a new coach after being a player, you probably your tendencies are going to be to coach initially how you were coached, whether you like it or not, but but that's probably the first reaction to do that. So when you're sitting down with coaches, do you find that there's a lot of yes, 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 or agreement or or initially that there's not really a true investment in evolving as a coach with you or do you get coaches a lot of times that are they're at the point where they're like I need to make a change in my career so that's why I'm reaching out to Robin and Anne Marie and I guess what I'm saying is is you know for somebody out there watching at, at, at what point do you recognize that they a coach reaches out to you or before they reach out to you, where do they get to? Is it, is it a, a terrible place? I hate to use that word, but is it, is it a really bad place most times, or is it just, you know, they know there needs to be a change and they're really just, they don't have the supporting network to help them get there. I, I'll jump in just really quick. The one just comes to mind and I would say uh, the word frustration. Okay. Frustration. Um, just as you know, I but it came from um, you know, I, I have a couple players. Oh, okay. So we listened to the conversation. Um, but then I also heard frustrate frustration in another environment in their life that was brought into the conversation. I'm like, huh, okay. So, you know, I just I just got curious. I said, I'm just really wondering, I go, why are you frustrated? <laughs> okay. Because if you're frustrated here and you're frustrated here, let's start with you first because you're the center of the storm. Yeah. So just open that conversation about maybe why the frustration is coming because what happens, it'll just show up in different parts of our life till it gets our attention. Yeah, for sure. And then you realize, oh, it, it, it's mine because <laughs> we're great to blame there and we're and blaming there and blame that person. But really, we start inside with ourselves. Yeah, that's interesting. You think about the blaming everybody else, right? Most of the things in life are like that, for sure, instead of self-analyzing, for sure. And what do you find on your end, Robin? 
I find that it is a mix across the board. It's the person that has always dedicated themselves to advancing. They're like, now I want to try my next advancement. I haven't done something like this. Now I'm going to go. So they already have a growth mindset in place. Then it's the, I am lost. I don't know what to do. I, my life is out of control and my, it's affecting my team. So the one that has awareness, then it's totally the opposite, right? Just what you guys said. It's everybody else's fault. My players are all out of control. My staff is all out of control. Okay, well, there's a reason because like Anne Marie was talking about, have we identified and looked at what is our energy? What are we bringing to the table? And Cliff, I just got to ask you a question real quick before I go on my next tangent is back in the day, because right now, like this is still coming to fruition, but in that coaching world back in the day, did any coaches ever talk about the energy that they were bringing or how your energy is affecting everybody else? Was that ever a conversation? Well, well, basically like back in the day, energy was like, Hey, you know, Hey, let's get the, let's get the dugout going. You know, it was like, that was kind of like the energy, like, Hey, we're going to start practice today. Everybody, with me. everybody, come on, let's go. Let's, let's get ready to rock and roll. It was a little bit different, different than the, I, cause I know what you guys do different than the energy that you are, you're talking about. You know, I, like I said, I've been on some really good staff. So, you know, Brian Ryman's of the world, the, you know, the Blake Allen's, the, you know, the Brian Peters that are out there. These guys are brilliant coaches that love this stuff. You know, Rucker Taylor, Hunter Royer. I mean, these are great coaches that are out there that I know personally that, you know, organically do some of this stuff, but they never had the training and the hindsight of, you know, trying to, you know, implement this with their teams. And I'm sure they're going to. But to answer your question, Robin, I mean, as far as like energy, the way that you guys are talking about it, no, not to my knowledge, not to the, none of the friends in the, the network. I know a lot of people in the game of baseball in college baseball, travel baseball, professional baseball, scouting. Not, I, this is very, uh, you know, it's, it's new to me. So I'm, I'd have to assume it's new for a lot of them as well. But the energy you're talking that you're talking about, no. But Kirk, you know, let's get the boys going, man. Let's come on. We're gonna get up. We're gonna win a championship. And it's like, hey, this is practice number one, dude. Like we got a long season, you know. <laughs> and I think that's really important, Robin. That you you just brought something the real real light. There's a difference between motivational energy, which to me isn't sustainable energy. It's it's limited. So let's maybe finish on that note, yeah. Rob. What are you talking about with energy? So the coach knows the energy you're speaking of. Right. So Anne Marie is an energy medicine practitioner. I am on my way to getting that certification as well. And this is taking the energy that is inside of us, right? This is basic quantum physics. This is listening, this energy, what keeps us together as a unit, what keeps a table together so it doesn't blow into a million pieces. That's the energy I'm talking about, what lives inside of us, not the motivational one. Thank you, Kirk, for pointing that out. We all need that, but that needs to come from somewhere and you need to cultivate. So if your energy is toxic and there's sludge and it's dirty in there, that is what you're putting out into the world. And that is what makes our team unique is we add this component that nobody is looking at. How am I off balance? Then that's how we, Anne-Marie creates a balance. She rids this toxic energy. And then that is how the mind is able to become clear to take in all of this mental agility. And so it's so important that people are looking at, there is so much more to this entire mental skills world when we dive into an energy component. And I just want to kind of shift into another tool that coaches can use to figure out where they stand on a scale and so that they understand there's so many other components still to come from in this leadership. Um, if you're not looking at energy, you're not looking at yourself. If you're not looking at communication, you're not looking at yourself. But if you're not looking at resiliency, you're also not looking at where you stand, right? Because a lot of the issues that are coming from the team are coming from you or coming from the staff. So I need to know where I stand on a scale. How resilient am I? If I'm not that resilient, what do I do to cultivate those skills? So we offer what's called an HRG assessment, and that is your hardiness resilience gauge. What is hardiness? It is the way in which we measure resiliency and we measure it in three components 
your challenge, how you handle challenge, how you use it to your advantage or disadvantage, your control, what can you control? What can you control? How do you manage and regulate yourself? And then your commitment. Am I all in, in all parts of my life, not just in coaching, in every part of my life. And you get measured on a scale from one to 130. And along that line, you'll figure out where you are and where you can build from in order to gain leadership. So if you, again, if you're not starting with you, you have nobody else to blame, but yourself. It is your job as a coach to lead from you, lead from experience and knowledge and education, and then give that to the players, assess the players, let them know their resiliency, let them know their communication style. That's how you build an effective winning team. And I would say resiliency, that's a word that, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, are, are saying this word resiliency a while back, it was all about sustainability and now we're into resiliency and and it, it, it's just a word that just is how well do you respond to events in your life that's it when something comes up what do you do do you freak out scream and yell at people or you're just like huh, okay so when something shows up how do you deal with it Kirk, I got something. I don't mind me jumping in here. Like what, what Robin and Amory are talking about is building like a culture, so to speak. And I, I know a lot of people, a lot of coaches throw that word out there, you know, but you guys actually deep dive into like the lowest levels of building the foundation for what people say, hey, we have a great culture. You know, like you guys are building from the bottom up to when you build a culture, it's a sustainable culture for a long time as you, the human being, as a leader, as the coach. Let's say you go to another college, another university, another team, you still get to go over there and build your own culture. But it's it, it all stems from the culture you built it from the, in the, the beginning okay. and by doing the work with them, you know? So, you know, you know that's just- I, well, I mean, So it's <clears throat> so interesting you said that clip because we'll go in and most people, have, what's your culture like? What's your mission statement? Uh, uh, I don't know. They don't even know. Some of them don't even know what their culture is built off of. How can we not uh, have across the board what we're all here for if the coach doesn't know the mission statement or the culture that has been set in place for the team? What I do know now, though, is like, I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, like when I was when I was coaching in college, you know, we'd go out to eat Golden Corral chilies, whatever, as a team. And I would always be like the last coach to like leave me and like the head coach. And I, you know, there were times where I had to put the chairs back or, you know, apologize to the wait staff, whatever. And I look back and I think of like those teams weren't very good. Like they weren't a very good team. It was a messy table at a, at a you know, on an away trip. It was a messy locker room. Then the teams that were outstanding for us, you know, were the teams that, I'm like, man, everybody put tucked in their chair and I have to say a word, you know, like uh, the locker room is outstanding. Like, wow. And we look back like, yeah, that was our championship team. You know, and it goes back to, you know, what Greg Brown was trying to teach back then, you know, like, you know, Hey, he was building it from the foundation up. He won a national championship about five or six years later. Right. Robin, I can't really remember, but you know, it was from the starting step points of putting in those bricks early. And then eventually, you know, his, the culture of winning that's that national championship was, you know, build it from those first days is the best way to, exp but with organically, some leaders are able to do it, but the program you guys have is you guys spend the time to teach it to the coach or coaches or executives or scouting staff, et cetera. And, and what's amazing for me in closing this one up is, is the fact that we're not talking about the sport. We're not talking about coaching the knowledge you have for your sport. We're talking about something that sadly, sadly, but honestly gets missed in youth development for coaches, for amateur. You know, there's a lot of great, great, great um, conventions and everything else out there that, that, that touch on it. But I think it gets lost because there's so much of the sport itself development training. And that's sad. That's sad. So that's amazing what you guys were all saying was because you were talking about the individual coach as a human being, 
not your knowledge of your sport. It's those things that can help you actually become a better communicator, a better leader, and a better self-evaluator at the end of the day. There's so much more we have to talk about. We know that. We said it at the top of the show for parents as well as coaches. So I, I probably, I'm going to ask you right now, ladies, I think we just stay on the coaches maybe or the parents for the next few weeks until we cover off some of these areas because we respect you as dirtbags. We respect your 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 expectations and, and we know that there's answers that are still left unanswered for you. So in the meantime, as always, ladies, where can they find you? We do not want to be on the sidelines, as we've said. Let's get in the game. Let's get you a better parent, a better player, a better coach. Where can they find you? Yeah, they can find us at l 4 Livin livin.com. You can email me at robin at l4livin.com. And um, you can always find us on our socials, Facebook, uh, Instagram. My Instagram is l4 underscore map underscore four sports. You can always DM us, whatever you're the most comfortable with. Just reach out. And I collaborate with Robin. So some background info for me, my website is www.healingwithin.us. And if you have any questions or anything you just like to email, um, my email is healingwithin11 at gmail.com. And Kirk, 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 if you want to find me, I'll be at a ballpark near you somewhere. I don't know what ballpark. Not near is. me. Not near me. <laughs> Not near, Not near you, but, but, but to the listeners out there, no, I know. ballpark somewhere near you. You won't even know I'm there. That's, that's how that's, hey, that's I'm offering, man. Just, just I put a tap on the shoulder, brother. I love it. So, ladies, as always, I can't thank you enough for your knowledge, your expertise, the, the L4 living map for mental agility for parents, players, coaches, agents, scouts, organizations. Why are you waiting? Do not wait. Do not make excuses. Do not say, why me? No, why not me? Why not now? Dirt bags. Yeah. We will be back here next week with another episode. We will carry on. We will hammer through this. We will be relentless on this because we know you need it. We all need it. We are better at the end of the day by going through this process ourselves, ritually. That's why we're so passionate about sharing it with you. But unfortunately, we do have to run now. So until next week, you do know what time it is. Clippy, it's time to get up. Get after it and get dirty.